This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And this week, he's taking a look at some of the weaponry from Remnant 2. I mean, it says in the description, a classic Tommy gun. Guys, this is not a classic Tommy gun by any stretch of the imagination. Just to note, after a few tech issues, the frame rate on Jonathan's camera is a little rough for this recording session, but I hope you enjoy nonetheless. And if you do, then make sure to like the video, subscribe, and let us know what other games or guns you'd like to see Jonathan break down in the comments section below. Right. Over to Jonathan. I am intrigued by the the setting here. I'm always getting like a quakey, quake one sort of vibe here with guns and a medieval setting. Anyway, I'm not here to review the game. I'm here to review the guns. And that's clearly a lever action carbine. So I've just run off and got hold of the worst one I can find. Sorry, sorry, Winchester 73, but uh, you are the worst. It's not bad by any means, but it's not in the greatest of of condition. It's very vaguely in the same configuration with a sh with a half magazine, uh, giving it that very different profile. Pop culture Winchesters or lever actions generally. We, I certainly like the magazine tube going right to the muzzle. It gives it that distinctive saddle ring, carbine, western cool look and more rounds, which is what you need in a game. So um, it's kind of kind of unusual they've gone for that that more sporty looking gun and the whole aesthetic is very rusty so in terms of function we have very slick animation coming off the off the sort of wrist of the of the stock a little bit too robotic for me humans absolutely can train to be that slick and and, and fast and that's possibly what they've I don't know whether they've mo cap that because you have to keep up that that sort of terminator rate of fire where it's repeatable every time and the exact same rate of fire i'd like to see a gap between cyclings that is ever so slightly randomly different because it would feel more realistic and the other thing i notice is great big ejection port on the right hand side so on the winchester i happen to have chosen for this this is of course the king's pa uh, patent loading gate which is uh you just press in the round really very clever design you've seen the cowboys feeding in the round through that gate and your ejection is out the top straight out the top uh, which looks very cool but that big side ejection port is more say marlin maybe certainly not winchester and really there's nothing on this as someone who supposed to have an item for detail there's nothing on this that i could say is definitively winchester now rusty repeater repeating by the way is a bit of a thorny issue and definitions become a problem definitions aren't a problem here a repeater is whatever you want it to be uh, in period it sort of meant anything that contained more rounds on it than it had barrels. Bit of a vague term, not very helpful for those of us who study this object necessarily. The description though, because this is a handgun, says auto pistol. Again, terminology comes in because when we say automatic, do we mean in the American sense of usually self-loading? And then we then say fully automatic if we want a truly automatic weapon that fires for as long as you hold the trigger and as long as you have ammunition. So this doesn't tell me necessarily whether this is, I suspect it's semi based on, on the domination of uh, American English. <laughs> it looks rough as heck. Reminiscent of something like the C96, but it's really not close enough for me to go and get one, <laughs> I don't think. Maybe closer to some of the Chinese, almost homemade, like small factory made mystery pistols, as Ian <laughs> from Forgotten Weapons calls them. Maybe something like that, I don't know. But the magazine in front of the pistol grip instead of in it immediately calls to mind um, things like the, the C96. So semi-automatic for sure and it is really it's bugging me because it's reminding me of something that isn't a c96 and for the life of me i can't think what it is and various people in the comments are going to get it and i'll be kicking myself later on ah bergman i'm thinking of the <laughs> one of the bergman pistols you it definitely has that more squat appearance but still with the magazine in front of the pistol grip i had the exact same feeling and i was like looking at early semi-automatic pistols for about 15 minutes yesterday and I was like, I think it is the Bergman. There are different Bergmans, but none of them quite look like this. But I, I suspect it's this that's inspired them. It's quite unusual and the default is to go for a C96 or a Schnell foyer. It looks a little like the um, 
rare 0608 Mauser. Yes, I should have remembered that one. It's in my book <laughs> <laughs> as the sort of legacy of the C96. So as ever, very hard to say whether the developers have actually seen something relatively obscure like that and use it as inspiration or whether they've just gone, we really like the general configuration of a C96, go wild. If I had to place money on it, I'd say it was that. But the yeah. shape of the barrel is very traditional and the grip is very traditional revolver. So it's, it's almost like a 19th century revolver, like a Webley with a semi-automatic action spliced into the middle of it. Always interested to know what the thought processes are with these designs and I very rarely get to find out. <laughs> That's radically changed the silhouette of this thing. Is this just meant to be some sort of suppressor? No, it looks like it's got another flame. The the mods all have like a, a flavor. So some of them look like diesel punky. Some of them look like organic. Um, it all depends on like what the mod does. So this one shoots like a Caltrop grenade. Yeah, I suppose we should address that. So for those of you who don't know, Caltrops are from, well, go back to the ancient world, certainly the medieval period, and they are just iron spikes. Um, we have them here. In fact, we have some gigantic ones, usually forged out spiky bits of iron that are forged, twisted into a, a, a spiky thing that when you throw them down, Whichever way they land, there's one spike sticking up. And they are anti-personnel, they are anti-haul, anti-cavalry. That's not what this is. <laughs> this is a spike grenade. Uh, and I can't think of a suitable game, but they've been in games before. So the spikes on the tin can style grenade are just making it stick. They're a sticky grenade, but they're using spikes because this is a dark, gritty style game rather than some sort of glue or whatever else you might use to stick to someone. Basically zero practical utility. Although caltrops are real and grenades are very real and, and they're both pretty ancient. No one's combined the two. There's something very funky going on with this rifle in that the bolt handle has swapped sides. Unless I'm losing my mind, which is given the amount of cursed guns you've shown me is, is possible. As it swap, seems to swap shoulders, the bolt handle, it's not mirrored on both sides, which would be very strange anyway. It's changing sides. That can only be a mistake, surely. Well, it's a, it's a kind of intriguing follow on to our sub plot side quest in this series of all the, you know, mirroring ejection on, so that it's happening out the wrong side, is that for entirely different reasons, and I, I suspect it is convenience, um, maybe they'll change it in the future, because in the case of the bolt action, you would have to completely rework the animation, basically from scratch, I think, to, well, there are several, there are different ways for left-handed people to operate right-handed bolt action rifles, you'd have to do a completely you know, new set of motion capture or, or whatever to, to create that. So that, that I think they're hoping we don't notice, but of course, we're gonna. <laughs> Now, lots of developers have done rusty Fallout-esque improvised, or what we would call craft-produced firearms. It's been done multiple times. I like the I like the way they've done it here, with recognisable bolts, screws, bits of metal that look like they haven't just been contrived to fit an artistic design. They kind of look like real objects attached together. If I'm making any sense at all. Despite appearances, if this is a shotgun, it's patterning pretty tightly. It's almost more like a short self-loading rifle in the way it delivers damage. But maybe I'm just thinking too much in game language. I don't know. Do we know what it's firing? What it's supposed to? Yeah, it is, it is firing buckshot. Is a it's supposed to be a, a shotgun. This is like the, the sort of close range class. I think that works. I mean, despite the short barrel, it's probably probably not far off in terms of what the pattern would actually be at these distances, if these are real distances. Right, so I saw Chicago Typewriter and I went and got a Chicago Typewriter. Um, one of the nicknames for, of course, for the Thompson submachine gun. I've chosen this because it's not in a good state. I don't know if you can see, it's even rusty. 
in the muzzle there. And it needs some conservation, which in due course it, it will get. An aesthetic perhaps more appropriate to this game than some of our beautiful, almost mint condition uh, Thompsons that I've shown you before. So it, it almost pains me to show you this, but it does have a, a well, it's kind of indicative of how we acquire some things because this was found in an attic. Looking at the actual game model, this is nothing like a Thompson in, in any respect. Receiver architecture is completely different. The furniture, absolutely different. It has a weird fixed pseudo FAL looking buttstock on there that looks like I made it. It's very Fallout. It's the most Fallout gun I think I've seen so far. Ironically, the Fallout Thompson knockoffs look much more like a Thompson than this does. Really the only thing that makes this a Chicago typewriter, two things. One, a vertical pistol grip. They don't all have that, of course. And two, the Thompson slash um, Papisher style, or Swomi for that matter, drum magazine. Uh, but that doesn't attach in any way. The same fact it attaches much more like the, the, the Papisher. Uh, it doesn't slide on from the side like the Thompson gun. It appears to fit vertically. I mean, it says in the description, a classic Tommy gun. Guys, this is not a classic Tommy gun by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and Tommy gun never became a generic nickname like Hoover did for vacuum cleaners for high capacity or high rate of fire or whatever submachine guns. Uh, gangster gun did derive from the Thompson, but not Tommy gun. And now that I pause this thing firing, I see that it's also firing implausibly long cartridge cases that look like AK rounds or something. So there's no way those would even fit in the magazine. So I'm I'm going to call this a bit of a bit of a dropped ball. Maybe not overall because. There's nothing wrong with the design, but um, I, ca I can't help feeling that if you set up people's expectations for a classic Tommy gun and you give them a completely different weapon, I think only people like like me and perhaps Dave would would care, but still. Long cartridge cases out of the non-existent ejection port as well. Oh my goodness. Well spotted, Dave. Yes. Yeah, I was so traumatized by, the, by everything else that I didn't even notice the cartridge cases are coming out of nowhere. Oh dear. Now, if we were not entirely happy, by sorry, but not entirely happy with how Thompson-y that um, Tommy gun wasn't, it's gone very strange now. Now, I don't have really a problem with that because this is weird magic, demon-inspired or whatever, swoops and curves, and it's a very cool artistic design. It's essentially what people do in the movies, armorers do in the movies, when they case something normal in a elaborate, often plastic, shell to make it look like something very different so that's essentially what, what this game is doing it's what other games have done absolutely fine i can't help feeling it would be even cooler if it was wrapped around a real thompson sorry guys i'm gonna harp on that one Okay, this thing is pretty reminiscent of the Smith & Wesson number three. The problem with this design is it doesn't, there, there are myriad, well not myriad, but lots of different ways to latch that two-part receiver, as it were, frame closed against the pressure of firing. This doesn't do either, uh, any of them. The, so the two main ones for this series of revolvers, one is a, a sort of a hasp style latch that goes over the top and that was the later system. Uh, the Schofield is, sort of comes in from the back almost like a hammer and has hooks that uh, hold, holds the whole thing properly shut. This seems to have fallen into, and we'll see when it's animated, the, the video game trap of we know what it what we've got a visual inspiration almost certainly smith and wesson in this case with a bit of colt in the plowshare grip maybe but we don't either don't know or don't care how it stays shut and on one level why should they care Right, so this thing is immense and heavy. Okay, if you're strong enough, you can wield that and that will let you chamber larger, more powerful cartridges. So, okay, you might make it that big and, and heavy. There really does seem to be no way of keeping the gun shut. Uh, we just break it open like it's a shotgun. At least with a shotgun, you're actuating a lever or a button or something to open it up. You can't ever just break open a gun. Well, if you can, you've literally broken your gun. Now, in terms of the fanning, it looks like a single action gun that is 
if you're gonna have, if you're gonna fan, that's the gun you do it with. We have fallen down the hole of no moving hammer at all though. So we're not reaching up and actually cocking it. We're only hitting it to fire the gun. It doesn't really make sense. So you've, depict, you've depicted a, a single action gun, but it's working in double action mode without the hammer moving and then you're fanning so it's it's yeah somewhat based in reality design wise but operates in a, in a fancy manner so it looks like i was thinking maybe all the guns in the game were real and then fantasy modified but we've got a fantasy gun here called a nightfall let's have a look it looks a bit bony and HR Geegery. I wanted to include this one because it made me very uncomfortable to look at, especially with the reload animation. Oh no, oh I know where this is going. Oh, lots of fingers. <laughs> uh. They twitch every time they fire, it's so messed up, I hate it. <laughs> is there any in-universe explanation for the horrific taloned fingers? Well, the, the, the weapon description is quite um, flavorful. Its skin undulates as though invisible creatures skittered underneath, sliding against your palms and tasting, just tasting your flesh. The back of your neck tingles every time you touch it. If you could hold a nightmare in your hands, you're certain this is what it would feel like. A device forged of pure evil fires hardened bone shards at a brisk rate. Bone shards? Well, I suppose it's firing them with magic, I guess. Just makes me think it's shooting fingernails. Oh God, <laughs> now you've made it worse. This, this is a piece of design where no one was there to say no. That's an intriguing looking design. Instant M60 vibes from the heat shield around the rear of the barrel there. And in fact, the gas cylinder is not a million miles away. The perforated heat shield around the barrel makes it look more like a Browning M1919 or maybe an MG34. But even the top cover and the carrying handle, they're very M60. So meant to be two guns, like a cut, cut and shut, as they as they say in the in the uh, criminal car industry. I'm not entirely sure though if that seam right in the middle is definitely where it's supposed to be two guns welded together. A little confusing because it's described as an experimental support weapon and it has this XM designation, implying that this would be some like the welding together of two guns would have been done to create the experimental weapon. But it's almost more like it's the experimental weapon welded to something else, or it's. A little unclear to me what's meant there because there's a, there are a load of big welding seams at the front as well where the barrel and the gas cylinder are attached so is the front and the back from one gun and the middle section from another gun the m60 design language would suggest that the whole of the back of the gun is one gun and the barrel and the gas cylinder are from another gun it's blowing my mind slightly i have to say I have now seen the top cover opened up and it's very strange. I took it to be a curved sheet metal top cover like the, the M60 or the MG42 that it, that, that feed mechanism was um, based upon. It's not, it's a solid shape. Doesn't make sense. Your, your top cover is there, not just to cover the top of the gun, but to drag the belt through the gun using some sort of pull system and there's none of that there so we have we have a, a very nicely modeled gun that's hollow on the inside and has something going on inside but it's not plausible for an actual belt feed mechanism it doesn't have a feed tray either so the belt of ammunition is just sort of dangling into the receiver and feeding magically whereas any belt fed machine gun will have a a pivoting feed tray that the the rounds sit and they come in perpendicular. They don't they don't come in like that as a rule. All right, a somewhat unique weapon here. Maybe not unique, but, but unique to my memory anyway, uh, of a combination grenade rocket launcher. And when we switch to rocket launcher, it sort of fumes away with jets of flame coming out of the breach. I guess like the idea is there's some sort of permanently lit rocket exhaust for that munition. And then it's that fire, I don't know. Or, or maybe it's meant to be some sort of power system. Don't know. It, it's very fantasy in, in that respect. Right, so we do, nice touches that the gr clearly grenade launcher site that looks like an M79 site or, or the one on the um, GM94 or whatever, flips down on its own. 
So it's some sort of mechanical linkage implied when the thing turns into a rocket launcher and you just aim it like level to shoot the rockets. And then when it becomes a grenade launcher, you're supposed to be using the grenade launcher site. Now, in reality, there are, there are no graduations. There's no adjustment there at all. How that's actually supposed to be used as a grenade launcher site is unclear to me. But it's nice to see the real feature of what would be the real gun used to indicate what mode it's in, I suppose. Okay, everyone, thank you very much for watching The Guns of Remnant 2. Completely new one on me, so lots of fun to go through. As always, if you'd like to support the work we do over here at the Royal Armouries, you can come and visit our museums. Uh, you can check out our social media accounts, our very own YouTube channel, where I am there, and with my colleagues talking more, uh, hopefully, interesting stuff about guns. Uh, whatever you do, though, uh, we'll see you again here on GameSpot next week.